Hey guys, welcome to Curling Class. This is the first video in a three-part series um, called Tactical Plans and Basic Tactical Plans. So it's what we want to do to accomplish our ultimate end plan and game plan uh, strategies. So strategy in curling is broken up into three areas and that's the game plan, the overall encompassing plan that we tend to execute for the game. And then that game plan can be broken down into end plans and we can break that down into the beginning of the match, uh, the middle of the match and the end of the match. And then based on our current end plan, we will choose a tactical plan to accomplish that end plan. So what tactical plan are we gonna use? I'm gonna cover three basic ones and this first one is hit everything. So let's get started. Okay, so as I would mentioned, we're going to be hitting everything. So the uh, non-hammer team has drawn to the forefoot and now we just want to come in and hit that out and stick. Um, and then that'll force them to hit us. They wanna to try to stick and keep it to the middle. And we'll just continue this back and forth until finally all the stones are gone and then they hit us and then we hit and stick for a score of one. So that's great if you wanna score one point, but usually the hammer team wants to score more than one point. So what do we do? Um, they draw to the middle, we hit them, and we want to roll to the wings. We want to try to stay in front of the T-line. I'll discuss that here in a minute. But this gives the hammer team a couple of advantages. One is that the non-hammer team, or, or most curlers, especially club curlers, they have more difficulty hitting stones on that edge of the 8-foot or out in the wings. So there's a chance, there's a higher chance they're going to miss that uh, takeout. And the other advantage is that Having the hammer, it's better for us to be in the wings. So if things go badly for us during the end, we can always use our last stone to uh, draw to the forefoot or to the button uh, to score the point. So let's say we roll to the wings like this. The non-hammer team's response is going to be to hit that stone and try to bring the play back to the center. So they may want to hit us, roll back to the center. Okay, so here we'll try to bring the play back out to the wings. And in, say in this example, they throw one and they flash. So what do we do? We just split the house and we try to be um, on the same height or the same level here so they can't do a double takeout. And so that's going to set us up to score two potentially. And the same can also be said for the non-hammer team. Um, if we were to flash one of theirs, they could also split the house and force us to try to score one only. So it can work both ways on, the, on this type of uh, tactical plan, on the hit everything plan. If the hammer team misses, we could be forced uh, into scoring one only. Okay, so let's say we hit and roll to the wings and now the non-hammer team hits. They're trying to roll back to the center, but they don't. They stay out in the wings. One thing that we could do, especially if they're behind the T-line a little bit or just on the T-line, is we could uh, then freeze to them and be shot and out count them. And this could potentially set us up for two. Um, or the same if they are end up higher in the house on the wings, we could just draw around them. So we just drew around them here in this example um, to out count them and be behind a guard. Okay, so they say in this example, the non-hammer team uh, throws to the metal to the forefoot and the hammer team has the hit everything approach and they flash it. So what does the non-hammer team do? Of course they throw up a guard more than likely and this will set them up for a steal. Okay so let's say that we throw one behind the T-line um, or we hit a stone out, one of their stones out, and we roll behind the T-line like that as I was saying earlier. Um, they're more than likely going to try to come down and free to us, freeze to us. They could try that. It could be risky as well. Because if they're out here in the open, we could hit and roll over, split the house here again to try to score two, but then they could potentially have two stones to freeze to. But uh, we're just keeping it simple here. So they come down and they freeze to us. And same thing for them. If they come over here behind the T-line, we're going to come down and freeze to them as well. So this could set us up for two as well. Okay, so there are a few rules of thumb that we can take away from this lesson, and that is that the hammer team likes to throw to the wings and have play to the outside of the house. The non-hammer team wants to bring everything to the center of the house, generally speaking, and you never want to have your stones going behind the T-line and resting back there because your opponents can always come down and freeze to you and be shot. 
And finally, uh, splitting the house. If you're trying to score two or force one, um, split the house, keep them at the same height um, in order to do that. So hopefully this gives you a little idea of the simple end of hitting everything. And there's gonna be a couple more parts in this um, basics series that I'll be posting soon. So good girling.